Welcome back, I'm Curtis Smith. Rick Daniel, Bernalillo County Horticulture Agent, has some questions that he'd like to share with us, the kind of questions he's getting this time of the year. Right. Rick, you get some about things like we see right here, don't you? Well, sometimes we do. Uh, sometimes people will, will come up and ask, well, what's wrong with the bark on this tree? And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about this tree? Okay, well, this is just one of the poplar trees, and it's one that has a smooth bark when it's young. And as it gets older, the bark begins to furrow. So we can see it here. And as I recall in the past, we've talked about sapsucker damage, and we've got straight lines, kind of like the sapsuckers do. But in this case, that's not sapsucker injury. That's injury, or non-injury. It's just where the lenticels begin to break open, and the bark begins to furrow. So this is normal bark development in a poplar tree. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Nice, smooth, pretty bark turns into a furrowed gray bark. Kind of an interesting look, isn't it? it? It's interesting, and when it suddenly changes like this, it does tend to get your attention, especially from a distance. Right. I imagine you're getting more questions, though, than just questions about bark on trees. Oh, sure. We're always getting some type of question. This tree over here is kind of an example of, of one that, that we might get at this uh -huh. time of the year. I see a lot of things that look like bird's nests over here. Uh, it's not actually bird's nests, though. It's, you know, fall webworm mm -hmm. uh, leftovers up there. A lot of people will ask, you know, what do you do? You know, do you need to do something about them at this time of year? At this point, no. The uh, worms have already turned into pupae, they're cocoons. They'll come out in the summer as moths to lay their eggs again. This is an indication you might have to treat next year. You may not, they're not doing that much damage. Right. But they do leave these things that look like bird nests in the trees through the winter. Right. Not a big problem. No. A lot of people will see something like that and they'll just go out and start cutting branches off and they'll cut way more than they need to and they'll actually do more damage than, than the, the worms would have done anyway. But of course the worms aren't even active right now. I remember you showed me some trees that they cut back severely because they had webworms in it and the pruning itself killed the trees, not the webworms. That's right. And so we've got to be real careful. We treat as we should treat and we don't go to extremes worrying about these things because they're really a minor problem because they really attack at a time when it doesn't hurt the tree. That's right. And so we're getting all kinds of questions in. But what's another one that's typical? Another one, some people are still trying to plant trees and uh, you know since it's a fairly good time of year to plant trees around here they're wanting to know getting what Getting a little kind. late now. But getting a little uh, late. And, and still a good time to be planting for it. Right, right. As long as you've got some ground that's not not frozen and that type of thing you make you make them think about, about planting some other trees. Um, Let's take a look at some of these here in the park and talk yeah. about them. You know, it's nice here in the park because we've got a lot of trees which have not been topped. As you drive around town, it's hard to get an idea of what the natural form of a tree really is. But these trees are not topped. They're growing in their natural form without any disruption. We can see cottonwoods, beautiful forms of cottonwoods. Uh, we see some upright poplars. We see some more broad spreading river or valley cottonwoods. Right. We see the honey locust trees. Uh, there are several elm trees here. And so we can look at these here in the park and see what we like. Right. You can actually see how big some of these trees get, and some of these aren't even fully mature yet. So uh, you, you have an idea of kind of the, the size that, that you're going to be planting in, in that spot in your yard. And it's a good thing to do that so that you know that the tree you're planting, when it reaches its ultimate size, fits that landscape. So often people plant a tree, it looks cute when they first plant it but pretty soon it becomes a monster. And then they're right. topping it and otherwise mutilating it, trying to make it fit the landscape. It's right. much better to plant a tree which fits in that landscape. That's right. In its natural form. That's right. Rick, thank you for sharing these questions about the bark on trees, about the false bird nests in the trees, about the forms of the trees, how to select trees to plant. Because these are things that the viewers of this show are very interested in. You're welcome.